Yeah. You want to like them, but you can't. Are you listening? What? Are you listening? Did you bring me on this show to insult me? Yeah. Uh. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh. Yeah. Hey, y'all don't want it with us, uh. man. You straight gangsters over here, Drake man. Gangsters. Uh. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Welcome yeah. back and good morning. You are listening to Scout Team Sports. We bring it to you hot and live each and every weekday, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. I am one of your gracious hosts. They call me Loudbeard. You are the most egotistical, self-deluded person I have ever met. Yes, and all of those things are factually true. And the man on the other microphone, he's the great patriot himself. He loves America more than squirrels love nuts. And that would be... America! America! Yeah, it's your boy Chris America coming to you live from Chicken, Alaska. It is a little bit cold up here in Chicken, Alaska, but... It's nonetheless beautiful outside. Loudbeard, I am ready to get started with our Wednesday Hump Day show. I'm ready. Hump I'm day? excited. You are ready. You should be excited. Now, I haven't heard from the Golden Ghost. Has he been haunting us this morning at all? I don't I don't hear any heavy breathing in the background. I think we're just you and I running running it on our own today. Would you agree? You and me and me and you. No matter how you toss the dice, it's me for you. Oh, wait, wait. Is that him? No, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I thought I, th- I, thought I heard the mic come on. No. Anyways, well, it's nope, just moving the, two, on. the two bro, the bromos. Tony Bromos is in the house. Tony Bromos. Uh, yes, that would be us. All right, man. We, we have a great show ahead of us today. For all of our listeners out there, we want to thank you all for listening in each and every weekday because we are bringing it hot and live. Today, uh, we've got the Pro Bowl selections came out. We can talk a little bit about snubs and and who got picked for the Pro Bowl rosters. Even though not too many people care about the Pro Bowl, it's still fun to talk about. LeBron thinks it would be amazing if Anthony Davis joins the Lakers. Yeah, I think... Everybody in the NBA would agree with you, LeBron. Anthony Davis would be good on any team, but the L.A. LeBrons, man, if LeBron's pulling the strings, they might make a a run at him. And our good friend Penny Hardaway, he's got some beef over there with the Tennessee coach Rick Barnes. We jump into that a little bit. And I I don't know about you, but on Wednesdays I'd like to get a little wacky. We When we're talking about the Christmas season, there's a lot of packages being delivered. But I don't know if you've seen this uh, glitter bomb with fart spray going viral on social media. I want to get into that a little bit. And I want to get your thoughts on that, Chris America. So we're going to have a wacky show today, including our top 10 or top 5 or top whatever bowls that we think should be joining in to this bowl season. Brought to you by the Scout Team. So... We're going in all kinds of different directions today, sir. We're going to be all over the place because it is Wacky Wednesday. Wacky Wednesday. Wacky Wednesday. Ladbert, it's also early signing day for college football, so we all, as grown men, get to lose our minds as to where 17-year-old boys decide to go to college. Yeah, signing day is kind of a, a dark day because you do. You get to see these grown people, men and women, start going on social media and attacking these players for not picking their school. Well, how dare you not come to Georgia or Alabama or Idaho State? How dare you not pick our school? You 17-year-old kid, you don't know anything. It, well, this is the darkest day of, of sports, in my opinion, because people get real nasty. My favorite is when they're like, oh, man, nobody knows how to keep commitments to st- these days. And I'm like, do you not remember what you were like at 17 where you were wanting to be something one day and then wanting to be something else the next? Oh, big time, man. It's like one day I'm, I want to be an astronaut, and then the next day uh, I just want to be a bum. Garbage man. Garbage man, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I don't yeah, want it doesn't you on the streets, Loudbeard. Yeah, whatever it takes, man. It, uh, garbage man. They, those guys get paid well. 
I mean, one hit wonders make millions of dollars off the fickleness of 17 year olds. It's true. That is very true. And there's a lot of one hit wonders out there, uh, including your boy, Patrick Mahomes. Is he a one hit wonder? Nope. MVP. No, he's a real deal. Future, future Hall of Famer. Okay. Probably Look super, at that. Future Super Bowl champ. Multiple Super Bowl champs. You heard it here first on Scout Team Sports from Chris America. Well, Patrick Mahomes has been selected as the starter of the Pro Bowl team over Tom Brady and Phillip yep. Rivers. Yep, makes um, sense. Do you, mm-hmm. you agree with that? You think that he should be over Tom Brady and Phillip Rivers? Listen, as the president of the Mahomes fan club, yes, I agree. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, Tom Brady, he gets selected to his 14th Pro Bowl tying the record for most Pro Bowls with Peyton Manning, Tony Gonzalez, Bruce Bruce Matthews, and Merlin Olsen. So kind of a a big deal there for Tom Brady. You think they should have just let him start because it's kind of an epic moment in Tom Brady's career. Why would they let this young young gun Patrick Mahomes start over Tom Brady? It doesn't make any sense. Listen, it's, it's a starting Pro Bowl for this season. It's not a lifetime achievement award, just like they're trying to make the MVP award for Drew Brees. It's not a lifetime achievement award, guys. It is a this season, and this season, Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league and the best player. I'm going to say it. He's the best player in the league. Therefore, he's the MVP, hands down, Patrick Mahomes, 2018 uh, MVP, 2018 starter for Pro Bowl, 2018 man of the year, 2018 athlete of the year, 2018 Patrick Mahomes. Mm. Mm. Okay. I'm Chris, okay. I'm Chris I America. I almost said my real name. I'm Chris America, and I proved this message. Yeah. You almost said Chris, United States of America, like your yeah, full name. Home. But just you call had, me you Ted. You had to cut it back a little bit. Yeah, Ted. Okay, Ted. So uh, your Panthers, they didn't get a whole lot of love on the Pro Bowl voting. Um, it looks like Luke Keekley is the only Panther. Oh, I'm sorry. And Trey Turner, your guard. So you got two selections very similar to my Redskins we got two selections also you know I'm also upset that my long snapper didn't get in so pretty upset about that but go on you, you should be upset about that you got to represent these guys man I mean that you have good players on your team they should make it are you surprised Cam Newton didn't get selected not at all <laughs> yeah that was a that was a softball. That was a softball. So just uh, real quick, highlighting some of the bigger names. Not going to go over this too too in detail. But um, as we mentioned, Patrick Mahomes is starting, but Drew Brees is starting on the NFC side. So that's a big accomplishment for Drew Brees. Jared Goff and Aaron Rodgers are the other two quarterbacks starting there. Um, Todd Gurley gets the nod. Julio Jones. A lot of these big names that we are pretty well aware of. And on the AFC side, um, you're looking at Von Miller and J.J. Watt, Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill. So a lot of the same names that we're used to. One guy um, that is kind of interesting is Philip Lindsay. Philip Lindsay was an undrafted rookie this year, and he ended up get, getting into the Pro Bowl, getting selected to the Pro Bowl. First time an offensive undrafted rookie makes the Pro Bowl. So that's quite the accomplishment for Philip Lindsay. But those are the guys that made the Pro Bowl. To me, that's not a whole lot to talk about. What is good to talk about is the guys that get snubbed. The guys that you think, wow, they had a great year. What were these people thinking not selecting these guys? Yeah, it's kind of like when we do our Friday fantasy drafts. And there's always people that are going to come out, no matter who we pick, no matter what our draft is. And we can have, like, literally 30 draft selections of movies. Like, we could pick... Every single Tom Cruise movie in a draft, but but five, and somebody's gonna be like, "Oh, how, how did you leave this movie out?" And it's the same way with the Pro Bowl. Oh, absolutely. Everybody's got their opinions, right? And yeah. speaking of, I do have to say, congratulations, sir. You won this week's draft. We did Christmas movies on Friday, and you you took it home. I had an early lead, but. As always, somehow, um, after you create several burner accounts, at the very <laughs> end, you end up coming back with the win. So uh, oh. congratulations on that. Um, Thank, the you, good sir. News Thank you, sir. The good news is Anthony Mack, uh, the man with the golden mic, him in his first draft didn't fare so well, huh? No. He kind of crashed and burned. And got to say I'm not surprised. <laughs> Yeah, some of his titles were a little out there. They may be some of his favorite movies. 
Right. But sometimes you have to go with a little bit more of that crowd pleaser, a little bit more of what people want to hear. And, you know, I, I felt good getting the number one pick when I grabbed Christmas Vacation because to me that is one of oh, the that, best. I mean, it's a, it's a solid movie. And I think, I think Anthony kind of helped me out by picking so bad because – I it had left those back. With, to, it left me with those mm. back to backs, and he he took what did he didn't he take like the preacher's, preacher's wife, wife or something yep. as his first pick? So I was like, yep. okay, like thank yep. you. I mean, to me, Elf would have been my second pick. I you, and I was like, when he said preacher's wife, I'm like, oh, Chris America gets Elf, and then you picked Home Alone. I'm like, oh man, dude, two solid choices, man. Oh, I mean, th- those yeah. two against Christmas Vacation, it's just it's just a no brainer. Um, mm. It was tough. That was tough. And then when I came back with Die Hard, I do like to bring in some of the controversial picks. You know me. I, I don't like to be soft and easy. Yeah, I, I bring in the controversial well, picks, and well, it brought in, in a lot of uh, discussion. You, you are kind of soft and easy in other ways. But, yes, not in a draft. Hey, now. You need to stop that now. <laughs> uh, so, as our listeners who have been listening for a while know, we, on Fridays, we, we typically... Not every Friday, but we'll do a fantasy draft. This past week, we did the Christmas movies, and it was a, a big hit when we posted it on social media, at Scout Team Radio on Twitter. We did a poll, and the people had spoken, and Chris America, you were the winner. You had Home Alone. You had Elf. Um, I don't remember your other two picks, but those two alone probably helped get you over the top. I think I had Bad Santa, and I'm trying to think what the other one was. I can't remember what the other one was, but it was good. We had a uh, Christmas story did not make the list. That made a lot of people upset. But again, it, I'm not a big just, like, fan of Christmas story. I left it off for a reason. It's just not one of my favorite movies. It's man. okay. It's, like it's a good movie. It's it's a good wholesome Christmas movie. But like I told the guys at Craft Brew Sports, it's just an, it's just there's times that it gets slow. There's times oh, yeah. we were big like time. all right, can we progress the story along here? Like let's let's move it on. Where like movies like Elf and and Die Hard and Christmas Vacation and and all those other movies, Home Alone. That, that those are no slow parts in those movies. It's always the story is always going. You're always on the edge of your seat. You're always wondering what's going to happen next. It's good times. Oh, absolutely. Die Hard, also, yeah, always moving. Die Hard, Christmas movie. Is, it is a Christmas movie. I'm just saying. Yeah. And um, hot dogs definitely not a sandwich. Just that's keep throwing that out there also, because we're just do, embracing debate today. Debatable. It, yeah. No, it's not a sandwich. So. We talk, we're talking about the Pro Bowl, and we, we jump into our draft, but there's always snubs, like the Christmas story. We snubbed that on our fantasy draft on Friday. So this year, some of the biggest names getting snubbed. One, we've got three defensive rookies that have had just absolutely phenomenal years sitting there on the outside looking in. And these are some guys we've talked about quite a bit throughout the season. One guy, the Dallas Cowboys... This guy kind of reminds me of Thor a little bit, but Leighton Vander Esch mm. from the Dallas Cowboys. Wow, he is getting left out. Uh, you know, th- this is one of those things that I really I feel like he should have been considered. He should have been in there. And not just him. The other one of the other rookies, Darius Leonard, has been left out. And I don't think Darius Leonard for the Indianapolis Colts should have been left out. He leads the league in tackles, and he is a rookie, and I think it's kind of namesake. A lot of people don't know this guy because he was a second-round draft pick, but he has come in, and he has been absolutely on fire. He's got He's leading the league in tackles. He's got seven sacks, and he's really been one of those guys that has just done it all. He's forced four fumbles this season, and he's helped make that Indianapolis Colts defense it, it kind of bring them back. So I think him was, or he was one of the biggest snubs. And the other rookie that I want to mention is Bradley Chubb. Bradley Chubb right now has 12 sacks this season, and he probably would have more if he wasn't across from Von Miller, who's a sack hog. And so you got three rookies there that are probably going to be in the discussion as defensive rookie of the year, all three getting left out. And I think that's a travesty. Well, I agree with you, but. Two of them make sense, and the one doesn't. The one that doesn't make sense to me is Van Der Esch. It's, it's very odd that a very good Cowboy is being left out of the Pro Bowl. Usually the fans, the Cowboy fans show out and vote. 
There's a lot of attention on the Dallas Cowboys right now. Everybody knows what's going on with the Dallas Cowboys, where I'm not trying to take away the production of those other two guys, but nobody's really paying attention to the Broncos and the Colts right now. And if they are, they're talking about, you know, should should Vance Joseph get fired or is Andrew Luck back? They're not talking about these two defensive rookies making all these great plays. They're just following the, the sexy storylines and stuff. So it is very surprising to me, though, that a Dallas Cowboy is snubbed when he's doing well. It never surprises me when they're not doing well, but if a Dallas Cowboy player is doing well, they usually end up in the in the Pro Bowl. That's a very good point. I am I'm also very surprised because sometimes these are popularity contests, not about who is the best player, but sometimes it's it's the popularity vote. And in this case, you would think a Cowboys would get in, and sometimes they leave rookies out for guys that have been in the league several years just because of that namesake. Now, I'm going to throw out another name here for you, Chris America, and this one's going to hurt you a little bit because I know you have to agree with me that this guy should have got some consideration. The the dual threat running back, quarterback, receiver for the Carolina Panthers, Christian McCaffrey, gets left out of the Pro Bowl this season. How do you feel about that? Uh, it, it boils my it, it grinds my gears. It boils good, my good peanuts. Mm -hmm. It boils my peanuts. It grinds my gears. Um, yeah, I don't get it. The kid is good. He's actually surprised me more than anything. I just wish he had another complimentary back to kind of lighten the load for him and, and able to wear the defense down with him. But he's he's been the star player of the Carolina Panthers. He's also been the star player of Robert Boucher Jr. fantasy football team, which is playing in the finals, by the way. Hmm, um, nice. Yeah. So somehow I ended up with Alvin Kamara, uh, Saquon Barkley, and Christian McCaffrey. That three-headed monster has just been leading me all season. But I digress. Yeah, I I think it's, it's again, the same reason why I said that the Colts and the Broncos players get ignored. Nobody really pays attention to the Carolina Panthers unless they're talking about Cam Newton. Well, McCaffrey right now has 13 combined touchdowns with 1,747 combined yards from scrimmage. Yeah. And he's leading all running backs in receiving yards this season. So he's he's making a name for himself. And a lot of times some of these players don't end up going to the Pro Bowl. So a lot of the, this list of snubs, some a lot of these guys will end up going in as alternates and making it onto the team. But... These guys should have been voted on from the, the very get-go. And a guy like Christian McCaffrey, he should be on this team. Yeah, I, I think he's leading the Panthers in the categories of receiving touchdowns, rushing touchdowns, rushing yards, and receiving yards. If you're leading your team in all four categories and, and they're good, you should be in the Pro Bowl. Yep, no, I, I completely agree. A couple of other names, uh, just of note, uh, Mike Evans doesn't make the Pro Bowl. It's probably because his team is terrible, but he's had a pretty solid season. Same thing with T.Y. Hilton, a couple big names, but there's only so many wide receivers that you can put on a Pro Bowl roster. These guys are recognized because of things like fantasy football. It makes these guys uh, really recognizable to the, the average fan. So seeing them getting left off, a little bit of a surprise, but again, there's only so many wide receivers that you can put on one Pro Bowl roster. Yep, yeah, and there's always a snub. Ah, they snub Chubb. Yep, they snub Chubb. Uh, you know, that that's the Chubb you want, but not the Chubb you need, right? That's the <laughs> Cleveland Browns yes, motto, Nick and they, they got yep Nick Chubb. So uh, you mentioned Vance Joseph with the, the Broncos. Um, I wasn't planning on going this direction, but it, you kind of prompted a story I saw earlier in the week. And I, I do want to discuss this. So apparently in the off season, there was a secret meeting that John Elway had, and he was thinking about firing Vance Joseph. And what he did is he brought in Mike Shanahan and he was talking with his front office and he was thinking about bringing in Mike Shanahan and bringing in Kirk Cousins. And he kind of said if he was able to get Kirk Cousins to the Broncos, he would have brought in Shanahan because Mike Shanahan's the one who drafted Kirk Cousins, has a great relationship with him, and felt like he would be the one that could come back and lead this Broncos team with a Kirk Cousins. And there was a story going around that in this secret meeting, there was a lot of consideration to bring in Mike Shanahan, fire Vance Joseph, and make Kirk Cousins the quarterback of the Broncos. 
What do you think of this story? What do you make of all of this? It just furthers my thought process that John Elway has no clue what he's doing. And that had he not had Peyton Manning fall on his lap, he would not have a Super Bowl. He would just have a solid defense. And, I mean, this is his, what, third or fourth head coach that he's going to be going through, and he's only been there since 2011, 2000. Yeah, I think it's 2011 is when Elway got there. If Peyton Manning doesn't fall to John Elway, he's picking some other really bad quarterback, and they're still being a losing season. So I think Elway got lucky that, and I'll say it again, Manning fell in his lap, made him look good, won him a Super Bowl, and what has he done before and after Peyton Manning? He's done nothing. The Broncos have just been an average to below average team. Yeah, and the sad part is they have a really great defense. With that defense, you could... I mean, you should be able to put uh, somewhat of an offense together. Now, they've gotten pretty lucky because they draft a guy like Philip Lindsay, or he goes undrafted, and they pick up a guy like Philip Lindsay, who has a Pro Bowl-type season. And there's just so many question marks at the quarterback, and, and we've discussed this in the past. I mean, a guy like Paxton Lynch ends up being a complete and utter failure. They have Trevor Simeon as a starter for a while. Now they bring in Case Keenum, and he's just not doing it. He can't find the right quarterback in his system after Peyton Manning. It has been a carousel of coaches and quarterbacks, and yeah. it has been a hot mess. I mean, they're starting to catch up with the Cleveland Browns and the Miami Dolphins with how many quarterbacks they've had starting. The only difference is, is Manning left two years ago or three years ago? Three seasons ago, right? Yeah, three. We're in three our third four, season. Man. I think we're in our third season without Peyton Manning because they won in 2015. So, yeah. This is our third season without Peyton Manning, and I would I would venture to guess that they've had four to five, maybe even six without looking. Definitely four quarterbacks that have started because you you mentioned Paxton Lynch, um, Brock Osweiler. Who's starting for them now? Case Keenum, and Case then Keenum. and then Trevor Simeon. So that's at least four right there. Four quarterbacks have started in three years for the Denver Broncos, and none of them started because of injury. Yeah, I, I mean, that's the who's who of terrible quarterbacks. I mean, yeah. they, they really need to maybe invest some money and pick up a guy this offseason. Like, I think Nathan Peterman is available. Uh, John Elway, I hear, is very high on Peterman. He would be great fit into that Broncos system. And you know what else it shows me, Loudbeard, is that Timothy Richard Tebow was a legitimate NFL quarterback because he's the one that got them into the playoffs the first time before Peyton Manning got there. Before him, it was just season after season of losing seasons, missing the playoffs. Tim Tebow comes in, and he leads them to the playoffs, and everybody's like, oh, it's not Tebow. It's the defense. It's that defense. It's so good. Then they make the right choice. They replace Tebow with Manning. They go to the two Super Bowls and everything else. And then as soon as Manning leaves, and as soon as Tebow's not there also to be there, where do the Broncos end up? Back out of the playoffs. That defense wasn't good enough to carry Trev Trevion Simeon. That defense isn't good enough to carry Paxton Lynch. That defense isn't good enough to carry the prototypical quarterback of Brock Osweiler. So I think it just goes to show you that, yeah, maybe the defense carried Tim Tebow a little bit, but Tim Tebow put that team over the edge and was the reason why they were in the playoffs back in 2011. Well, we all know that Tim Tebow just... He didn't get a good good opportunity in the NFL. He did a great job when he was with Denver. I thought the Eagles, when they were when they had Chip Kelly, they had given him a shot. I thought Chip was going to let him take an opportunity to show what he was worth, and they ended up cutting him towards the end of that season. I thought season. he looked good in that preseason. Oh, huge. Like He had great games. He looked perfect in that system. I mean, I think that might have been one of Chip Kelly's downfalls, not keeping Tim Tebow. Keeping, when you look back, you it couldn't have Mark hurt. Sanchez over Tim Tebow, you're going to end up fired. Oh, it makes me think of my Redskins, unfortunately. Yeah. it It's not a good thing. Uh, what's up with Mark Sanchez? Why is he still getting jobs? Maybe he's got the same agent Sam Bradford does. Oh, Sam Bradford's the worst. All right, so. The absolute. Yeah, Sam Bradford. I mean, if you if you want to pick Mark Sanchez and Sam Bradford as your quarterbacks for your team, you're obviously looking to get the number one draft pick. Yeah. So just throwing that out there. And isn't that what Chip Kelly did? 
Yeah, kind of. I thought wasn't it Sam Bradford and Mark Sanchez, or were they not on the the Eagles at the same time? I don't remember, but he's had both on his team. I know that. Yes, they were. Yeah, they were both on the Eagles. I don't know if that was around the same time or not. I'd have to go back and stat check that a little bit. Um, so I don't know. All right, so we've got about five minutes before we go to commercial break. I'm gonna change gears on you a little bit. Our guy, Penny Hardaway, who is an Orlando Magic legend. I love Penny. I've loved Penny for a lot of years. He's got some um, issues over there with Rick Barnes, the head coach of the Tennessee Volunteers, and he, he's not so happy with his in-state rival. And, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things where the, things are getting nasty, things are getting dirty. All right, so this is a comment from Penny Hardaway. He says, I don't know who Rick Barnes thinks I am, but I'm not a dude that just likes to, or likes to just mess around about anything. I just call it like I see it, no matter how he's trying to make things seem. And I think it's kind of low class how he's trying to downgrade my guys for flopping and all that. Man, come on, give me a break. And they played the other night, and Penny and, and this guy Rick Barnes, they look like they're about ready to go at it. There's some drama, there's some fighting, there's some scrapping. And I think Penny Hardaway is coming into Memphis on, on a mission. You know, he gets one of the, the number one recruits in James Wiseman. And I think a lot of these other, these other coaches are starting to kind of see what he's doing. And they're, they're wanting to, to knock him down a peg. You know, they're wanting to say, oh, who are you? What are you doing coming in here? But really, Penny's coming in and he's like, this is who we, who we are. This is who I am. I'm not backing down from anybody. You can bring it however you want to bring it, but my guys are going to show up and I'm not going to stand for these other coaches and these other teams to talk bad about my guys. I love what Penny Hardaway is doing, Chris America. I like it too, and I think the state of Tennessee needs some sort of rivalry going on. The Tennessee football has, team has been a lapdog for the longest time. Um, you never really hear anything between Memphis and Vanderbilt and Memphis and Tennessee. It never makes national headline news, at least. So if it's going on in Tennessee, maybe they know about it in Tennessee and we're just oblivious to it. But I think it's great. It's putting Tennessee basketball on the map, whether it's Memphis, Tennessee, Vanderbilt, Tennessee. I like it when there's good in-state rivalries going on. It's one of the reasons why I'm very disappointed that UFUCF can't get this going because, let's face it, Florida State sucks now and Florida's good. So that's going to be a boring rivalry. We need to see some good in-state rivalry stuff going on. But, yeah, man, anytime that you make your team – you know, headlining and stuff, and you see a coach that's fiery like that, I think recruits are going to be drawn to Penny Hardaway for that as well. Oh, absolutely. Well, one, I mean, when you're a, a excellent player like Penny was, he was a well-respected player when he was in the league, that helps. But now that he's a coach, you can see that he's bringing a lot of that fiery competition that he had when, you know, the competitiveness when he was a player to that as a coach. And you're seeing... At, I guess it's in college. You're right. You, you get these young kids that need to get recruited, right? And they want something to follow. They don't want some vanilla team that there's just not, nothing exciting about. They want to go to that team that's got that little bit of edge. It's like the Fab Five in Michigan. Everybody was, you know, they were edgy. They were cut, you know, different, and they were able to bring all those guys in. I mean minus the money that was being paid at the time. But you want to be on that team that has that edge, that has that fire, that has that leader in a coach like Penny Hardaway that is just tearing it up for you and for your team. And I'm, I'm just saying this right now, Chris America, I can see Penny Hardaway taking this Memphis team in the next couple of years and making it a powerhouse. I could see this team being a powerhouse over the next two to three years. I like it. I think American Athletic Basketball needs Memphis to be good, to kind of rival UConn and Cincinnati. They need more teams to kind of come up and make that that basketball conference a more solid conference as well. But there's one thing I'm disappointed about Penny Hardaway being back, Loudbeard. And what is that? There's no Little Penny. Where is oh, Coach Little Penny? I was how thinking the same seen, thing. How have we not seen a Coach Little Penny commercial on the sidelines yelling at recruits? Or like yelling at players, going on the recruiting trail. Like, come on, Nike, hit me up. I got some ideas. No, that's a great idea. I think. I mean, maybe they're doing it in the local market. Maybe they are. But this needs to go national. We need to have a little penny coaching 
all over the the TV. We need to see this. Everybody wants to bring Little Penny out of retirement. People miss Little Penny. We need to get him back. I agree with you, Chris America. That would be one of the best things ever. Well, Loudbeard, one of the other best things ever is John Gruden. He's about to pull the trigger on a hot free agent quarterback, and we'll talk about that on the other side of the break. When I'm working hard, I build up a thirst for sports. That's when I grab a cold 12-ounce sports radio. (sighs) 12-ounce sports radio. Quench your sports thirst. Oh, guess who it is. Did you know the station had a janitor? Oh, yeah, the Hefe otherwise known as Beck, and it's Beck's Work Week in Review live on 12 Ounce Sports Radio every Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Catch interviews, special guests, and the recap of the week's news and headlines and box scores and results. It's Beck's Work Week in Review live on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. Scout team listeners and friends of the show, I've got something special for you. It looks like 12 Ounce Sports Radio has done it again. We have partnered with Rally House. You just go to the website, 12ozsportsradio.com. Click on the banner on the right side of the page, and it will take you directly to Rally House. Rally House has some of the greatest, most unique sports items for that diehard fan, casual fan, and anybody and everybody out there that is special in your life. So go ahead and check it out. Once again, go to that website, 12ozsportsradio.com. Click on the banner to the right of the page, and you will get taken to the best sports merchandise website on all of the interweb. Do you own a small business? Are you looking for solutions to all of your communications, problems, and challenges that you have? Check out Ring Central. Give them a call. They have partnered with 12 Ounce Sports Radio. Dot com to give you the best rates on all of your business and office solutions for communication. Give them a call today. We have a dedicated line for all of the 12 ounce sports radio listeners. It is 1-877-779-3860. You will get a representative on the phone who will help you with all of your small business communications needs. Once again, give them a call today. one 1- Eight seven 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 nine three eight six zero. Once again, you are listening to Scout Team Sports. I'm Loudbeard. He's Chris America. We bring it to you hot and live each and every a.m. That is Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. And replay on at 11 a.m. on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. If you are unable to catch the live show, don't fret. Don't worry. There are other opportunities to listen in. You can catch the podcast at our website, scoutteamradio.com, or on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, anywhere that you can find a podcast. Also, we like to get social, and that means you can hit us up on Twitter, at Scout Team Radio. We will talk about your tweet on the air. We live. We like to talk about live tweeting. And also, if you want to check out our Facebook page or Instagram page, it is all at Scout Team Radio. Wow, we are at our hump day today. It is Wednesday. Chris America, I know you're over there on the other end, and you're thinking, man, I can't believe this week is almost halfway over. Yes, it's, uh, by the way, it's also um, it's also National Signing Day, and I just like to would, would like to announce that, uh, you know, I've, I've put a lot of thought process into this, and um, me and my family have weighed the decisions. I'd like to thank God and and everything else, and I would like to announce that I'm uh, I'm announcing my commitment to the Stony Brook Sea Wolves. Please respect my decision. No interviews, please. 
Wow, that's a big big news right now. I yep. like it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, so, Chris America, you're doing good work over there, sir. I appreciate it. Um, Stony Brook, they're getting a really great talent, and we're going to respect your wishes. We won't even t- talk about it on the airwaves. Yeah, thank but... you. Sea Wolves for life. No, I, I agree with you. You, you. you just need to keep that private. Sea Wolves for life. life. You cho- are you choking up on that decision? I, I am. I'm, I'm dying over here, man. You know, I've been. It is the season, been... man. It's 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 cold and flu season, man. You're you're coming down with it. I think Anthony Mack came down no, with I... it over there in France. So. Oh man, I've been sick since Friday. Friday was like a rough day all day at work. Uh, Saturday, I kind of like laid in bed all day, and yesterday I, I thought. Well, Monday I thought things were getting better, and then yesterday I feel like it tur- took a turn for the worst again. Woke up this morning, I'm like. Man, I'm struggling to get through. So if I'm if I'm lacking a little bit of energy, it's because it is. It's cold and flu season, and Loudbeard is is he's fallen to the the flu gods, and the, I think the cold what, gods. What the folks up north don't understand about being in Florida is yes, it doesn't get extremely cold, but what we get is this roller coaster ride for six months where it can be. 40 in the morning and 75 during the day and you can have a you can have an 80 degree day one day and then the next day it doesn't get above 52. It's just the roller coaster ride just wears on your body and you eventually just get sick. Absolutely, man. And I'm sick. And I I can admit it. Now, Anthony Mack, he he must have got really sick because he was wearing that banana hammock over yes. in France and he- and he said that the they went into overtime and they had a banana hammock dance off, so should have been fun times. I heard the helicopter move one. All right. Well, you know what? Since we're coming off break and we're talking about banana hammocks, I, you know, with bowl season, we talk about all these weird small bowls that we've never heard of, and there's crazy names for. I just wanted to maybe talk about us giving some suggestions for for new bowls that can be coming out for the college football bowl season and i've got a few really good ones here that i want to share chris american have you put any thought into maybe adding some additional bowls to this bowl season yeah i i heard where you're going with it and i'm gonna go a different direction just kind of keep it you know back and forth in a little bit so I, i actually looked up some interesting business names that are true businesses these are businesses that actually exist and i think they'd be great if they had um a bowl game I like it. Okay, so we're going in a couple different directions. Um, well, my first bowl, I would say, that I would like to to have out there. One, it's the Amazon Bowl. But it's not just the Amazon Bowl. It's the Amazon, we're taking over the world because we're actually Skynet Bowl. Because to me, that's the truth, what is actually happening out there. So that would be my first new bowl game that I'd like to add to the world. Well, I think if you're going to have a bowl game, you need to be in the Fortune 500 company. You need to be a Fortune 500 company, a name that people know and trust. And Loudbeard, there is nobody I trust manufacturing my pipes and valves than McJunkin. The McJunkin Bowl uh, needs to happen. I need a McJunkin Bowl in my life. Number yeah, it keeps your pipes clean, huh? McJunkin yeah. gets your pipes clean. McJunkin keeps my pipes clean. He's number that that business is number 493 on the Fortune 500 list. All right, well, this is another Fortune 500 company. It is the Golden Mike Banana Hammock Bowl. Golden Mike makes his own series of banana hammocks. They're shiny, they're gold, and they are hot and popular. So the Golden Mike Banana Hammock Bowl, this needs to happen. I like it. Um, Louder, mostly bowl games need what? They need advertising, right? They Absolutely. need tons of advertising. That's how they generate, because nobody goes to these bowl games. Like, when you watch the bowl games... It's nothing but empty stands. It's like 10 people are there. They probably gave those 10 tickets away. I know I went to a bowl game here in Orlando where you just showed up at the gate at kickoff, and they just gave, they let you in. It was like Maryland versus Wisconsin, too. It was very odd. I can't remember which bowl game it was. It was like 10, 10 12 years ago. Anyways, so if you're going to need advertising, you need an advertising and marketing company. And no better advertising and marketing company is Wong Duty. Crandall and Wiener Advertising Company. Wow. The okay. Wong Duty Crandall Wiener Bowl. I like it. They sound like they would be great advertisers, um, especially Duty and Wiener. Um, they sound yes. like they, they're carrying that team there. Um, this There's one something is something l- Wong with that, with that name. <laughs> 
All right, the next bowl that I have, this one's a little edgy, a little racy, if you know what I mean. That would be the Papa John's Pizza and Racism Bowl. Mm, mm. I like that. Too soon? No, no, not too soon at all. All right, well, that one needs to happen. Papa John's loves, loves football, so they might as well tell it what it is. Pizza and racism, that's what they're all about. Well, I'm the Papa I, himself. You know, you know, I love America. I'm Chris America. This company has the name America in it. It is Schwing America. I think we need a Schwing America Bowl. We can bring back, um, God, who were their names? Garth Wayne's and, World. Uh, Wayne's World and Garth. Bring them back. Schwing America Bowl. I love it. Wow. Schwing. I like it, Chris America. Um, now, the next one I have, this one I was a little up in the air. I wasn't sure if... Because I, I, I feel like this needs to be sponsored by a big name, not necessarily just a business. So I was kind of up in the air. I don't know if I should do the Kyrie Irving Flat Earther Bowl or the Steph Curry Lunar Landing Bowl. One or the one or the other would have been a good name for a bowl this bowl season. Mm, I like those. I think we, you should go with the Lunar Landing. That's a little bit more relevant story. Kyrie's backed off on his Flat Earther claims. You know, we've all been there, Kyrie. We've all been down a YouTube rabbit hole. Sometimes we go down these rabbit holes on Scout Team Sports. That's right. All right. Um, this one's a little dicey for the morning show, but again, this is an actual company name. It is uh, It is in 40 countries and in six, six continents. They manufacture a thin layer of chromatography plates, whatever those are. But if you ever need a chromatography plate or at least the thin layer to one, you want to go to Anal Tech. So... Go to Anal Tech Bowl. It it'll really just it, it's just it's just good times. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll go moving on from that. Well, I have one last name for a bowl. Okay. And I, you know what? I had to go a little edgy, a little racy on this one. Also, Chris America. This is probably not appropriate for our morning show, but I'm doing it anyway. And that would be the ah uh, the Donald Trump grab them by the pussy cat. Bull. Whoa, this raises whoa, money for whoa. spaying and neutering your pets yes, because when you have pussy cats and puppies at home. You want to yes, make sure that you spay true. and neuter spay them, and, neuter and them. it would be better for the the environment and for the world. And uh, Bob uh, Barker, he's also on board with this one. Okay, loud well, it. That's perfect that that was your last one because my last one goes right there with it. Uh, Loudbeard, we 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 love the Orlando area. We're here in Central Florida. We always promote everything that's going on in Orlando area. And one of the largest businesses in the Orlando area, it's a conglomerate of manufacture of engineering and industrial equipment. That, of course, is Siemens. <laughs> so yeah. the Siemens Bowl, right after the Donald Trump, grab them by the pussycat, spay and neuter your pet bowl. I like it. Yep. I like it, man. That's where we're at. And those would be really good names for bowls. And I think we should make this happen. The scout team yeah. needs to sponsor our own bowl. And we can come up with some really great ideas for additional bowls to be added. Because who needs, you know, we've already got like 50 or 60 bowls. We might as well add an extra 10 or 20 onto that. Because why not, right? Nobody even attends them anyway. Why just not? Have, have bowls just to have bowls. By the way, Siemens is named after its founder, Werner Von Siemens. All right. Been better if his name was Wiener. That sounds but. like an actor I once saw in a um inappropriate movie. Mm. Mm. Is Let's this the morning show? Am, am I? Can, is this on? Is Did this you cut on? me off? Well, hello. I hello? actually I just came up with one last name. It is the John Gruden. I'm gonna make an awful decision bowl. All right. Well, that one is definitely happening. And right now, as we speak. He is working and crunching out the numbers with a one Nathan Peterman's agent to work out a deal to sign him to the Raiders. Are you being serious? That's Listen, the kicker in the outlaw, one of our bro shows on 12 on Sports Radio, I believe you can hear them at 2 o'clock today. Um, they tweeted at us from Pro Football Talk that Nathan Peterman working out with the Raiders. Wow. I'm just I, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, you know, it, it almost leads to that conversation like Nathan Peterman keeps getting opportunities, but Colin Kaepernick can't. Uh, y yeah, I mean, there comes to a certain point where you're like, you know what? There's what something wrong with here? the NFL. Yeah. yeah, what are we doing here? 
I, I think I, John Gruden's just glad he didn't have to give up a first round pick for Nathan Peterman. I, I mean, I don't want to be this guy, Chris America, because I, I really doubted you. But I did. I, I found the tweet that you were talking about. Pro Football Talk <laughs> did say that the Raiders are working out a Nathan Peterman. <laughs> I would have oh doubted me God, too. Oh my God! I didn't believe it. It was too too bad to be too be, too bad to be true. Uh, John Gruden is the quarterback whisperer. Maybe he, he can help turn around Nathan Peterman's career. I mean, if John Gruden can turn Nathan Peterman into a Super Bowl champion quarterback, I will. I will come on and eat an idiot sandwich every single day for the next 365 episodes of just saying I was wrong about John Gruden. But chances are I'm not going to have to do that. No, chances are you're not. Um, so today is Wacky Wednesday, Chris America. Um, I mentioned it uh, on, the beginning of the, on the beginning of the show. But I love this whole glitter bomb uh, fart spray situation going on in the world. So there was an engineer that was tired of having his packages just ripped off of his front porch. And right now, holiday time, uh, you, you like to deliver your packages, Chris America. I know, who, mm -hmm. I know you. I know who, what you like. And there is a rampant problem in America where packages are being stolen off of front porches left and right. And this gentleman, an engineer, he said, you know what? I am going to find the solution. So he puts a little camera on the box and he, he fills it with glitter, and he fills it with fart sprays, which the fart spray thing, genius. Absolutely 100% genius. And you can follow the videos of people stealing the packages off of his front porch and some of his neighbors that were having the same problem. And as soon as they get in the car, the package explodes. Glitter and fart spray get all over their car, all over them. And you can hear them, and they're pissed. They're pissed. They're like, what? What the? What? Who would do this, dude? You just stole someone's package. Like, you deserve that. You absolutely, one hundred percent deserve that. And I had to bring this story up because I, I couldn't help myself but just like continuously, continuously just watching these videos because I think it's hilarious. It's like, why do people think that it's okay to steal something, and then when something bad happens because you stole it, it's like. You're ready to be pissed off at the guy that glitter bombed and fart sprayed you. Yeah, I actually started watching this video right before we went on air. I was scrolling through Facebook, and it was an 11 minute long video, and I wanted to keep watching it, but we had to. We have a show to do, so I was watching him engineer this thing, and I, I think it's ge ingenious. I wish I was that smart to create something like that, but I only am smart enough to come up with like the Siemens bowl. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's your claim. And, to and fame, really, all I did was just list off, go to a website where it listed off funny business names. Yeah. Okay. Well, you did a good job there. Uh, I'm very proud of you. Yeah. Uh, you. But sometimes being a you. good coach is picking out the best talent, and that's what I did. I picked out the best best names there. Uh So yeah, with this holiday cheer this time of season, a glitter glitter bomb and fart spray. I feel like I'm gonna get my kids that for Christmas. No, you so don't they, want they get that. the package and they start to open it up and oh, boom. okay, yeah, yeah. You want it for them, yeah, yeah. That would be yeah. that actually be hilarious. <laughs> Christmas morning and all of a sudden, boom. The fart and you know, spray it all started bomb. from. Do you, do you have you ever seen those glitter glitter grams? No, I haven't seen those. So what you do is you just you just it's a company where you pay five bucks and they'll send a letter full of glitter to your friends and it's an ingenious idea like all i got, like i don't know why people pay the five bucks like why don't you just buy glitter yourself and put it inside an envelope but people do and it's a business so it's where you open up your letter and you you as soon as you unfold it all this glitter falls all over you huh i like it is that for friends or enemies or frenemies or, or both or both yeah i mean you can pick and choose choose your own adventure do you think they deliver directly to the Banana Hammock headquarters where I can reach out to the Golden Ghost Anthony Mack? I think so, yeah. I'd like to get him a glitter bomb. A little glitter glitter gram. He would, he would love to be glitter bombed. Oh, absolutely, man. Uh, well, we've got about five minutes left. Uh, the only other item I have on the agenda today is I was going to talk about LeBron coming out saying it would be amazing if Anthony Davis joined the Lakers. Um... Yeah, thank you, Captain Obvious. It would be amazing if Anthony Davis joined any of the NBA teams. I know you and I are huge Orlando Magic fans, Chris America. Would you think it was amazing if Anthony Davis joined the Orlando Magic? 
Uh, yeah, I think it would be absolutely fantastic. And I would love to have a player be like, hmm, do I want another superstar on my team? No, that sounds awful. Why would I want that? Yeah, I mean, somebody, sometimes these guys got to start being real. They always want these, these guys on their teams. And then when they get on the team, it's always like a little, little hoaxy. Um, for example, what I'm kind of getting at here is like Jimmy Butler going over to the Sixers. You know, Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid are like, yeah, this is a great idea. We're going to get another superstar. It's going to be great. Then he gets there, and Joel Embiid and Jimmy Butler sit there, and they're like, well, I don't really like sharing the spotlight. Um, I want the ball more than you. And then they, they start getting into it. I wish these guys would be real and say, you know what? I really don't want another superstar on my team because I don't want somebody hogging the ball from me. I'd really like a good role player that's there just for me to dish it off to so that it helps my assists every once in a while. And this is what these guys should say. LeBron James, yes, he would love to have Anthony Davis there. Would they be able to coexist? Probably, because LeBron, he does like to help facilitate from time to time. But there's a lot of NBA superstars that are absolutely selfish, and they really don't want a guy like that's going to overpower them on their team, but they never admit it. And I'm with you, Chris America. I wish sometimes these guys would just say, no, I really don't want another superstar on the team. I'm the superstar. Don't bring I, this guy I just in. Wanna, I just want to hear a guy that's like, you know what? I've heard from other guys around the league. This guy doesn't use his blinker. He microwaves fish in the break room. Like, I do not want this dude in my team. Oh, yeah, absolutely. you got to find several reasons why you don't want him over there. Uh, this is kind of what teams should do with Carmelo Anthony. I mean, for a while, there, everybody's like, yeah, we want Melo on our team. But there has never been a team that said, wow, this really helped us out because we got Carmelo Anthony. It hurt the Oklahoma City Thunder. It hurt the Houston Rockets. The Knicks kind of hurt them. Denver never made it past the first round of the playoffs with Carmelo. I'm just saying, why don't people just come out and say, yeah. that guy's a cancer. I don't want him on my team. They're afraid like, to come out. They don't want that negative publicity. Because they're, they're on banana boats together. You don't want to rock the banana boat, Loudbeard. This is the last thing you want to do. Banana boats aren't stable to begin with, so if you start rocking it, you're going to fall in. But I, we, we talked about embracing debate earlier on the show. I have to debate for you, Loudbeard. Oh, I love it. Bring what it. is worse, the person who microwaves fish or the person who burns their popcorn in the break room? Um, I would say microwaving fish would be worse because it is a nasty, nasty smell, the fish smell. Even if the fish tastes good, it always smells nasty. Burnt popcorn... Yeah, it kind of kind of never goes away, does it? Like you can smell it for like 3 days. So, uh, by a smidgen, I'm going to have to say microwaving fish in the break room. I'm going to have to say burnt popcorn only because you said burnt microwaving fish and we're embracing debate. So, you're wrong, Loudbeard. It's burnt popcorn for the reason you said. It sticks around for 3 days. Well, the good news is I have never been wrong in my entire life. And I just want you to know that. So you're wrong. Mm. Well, Loudbeard, we have two minutes left on the show. Did you like to make a commitment to a college before we sign off? Uh, no. No? Well, I oh, guess I gonna, could, Are I, you going to wait for the next signing day in February? Yeah. I mean, this early signing day, when did this become a thing? I, last I don't season, even like last, this. Last season was, was last year, right? Yeah. Why? I just do it's kind of regular really Christmas day. season, doesn't it? It does. I mean, when the players that I wanted to sign didn't sign with my team, now I'm depressed. And these 17-year-old kids ruined my life. They absolutely ruined my life. Yeah. I'm just waiting to see what Jim Jebo does. I'm hoping Jim Jebo pulls the trigger. He's a 30-year-old or 31-year-old quarterback. Unknown, but he's coming off of a broken hand injury that he, had, that he sustained in baseball. But Jim Jebo, he's got a killer mustache. I hope he signs with the Florida Gators. Okay. Yeah, the Gators could use great. that help. I think he'd be great in Dan Mullen's offense. <laughs> I just want to send, see Jim Jebo be a multi-sport player. He should play baseball and football. He he could be a regular Bo Jackson or he, Deion Sanders. He could be the next Kyler Murray. Yeah, why, why isn't there more discussion about Kyler Murray playing both sports? Why does he have to pick one or the other? We yeah. haven't seen a good multi-sport athlete in a very long time. And if Deion Sanders could do it, if Michael Jordan could do it, if Bo Jackson could do it, then any of these guys can do it. You can dance if you want to, Loudbeard. You can leave your friends behind. 
Because if they don't dance, then they're no friends of mine. That's right, my friend. Well, it's been an absolutely wonderful episode. I've had a wonderful time talking to you today, Chris America. I love the, the listeners out there that are listening in. Thank you so much for listening in. Again, we are here every Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. on 12 Ounce Sports Radio. Replay at 11, and you can always catch the podcast. Lead us out, my friend. What do we have to look forward to tomorrow? What other bad decisions will John Gruden make? Well, he's going to go and make sure he gets a thin layer of chromatography plates with Analtech. Analtech is in De- Newark, Delaware. Delaware figures. Those people are all about their anal tech. Anal tech. Is it anal tech or anal tech? I'm pretty sure it's anal tech. I agree. Tomato, tomato.